Uh, our study this morning is going to be on God's covenant. God's covenant. And our verse is going to be Psalms 50, verse 5. Psalms chapter 50, verse 5, which says, Gather my saints together unto me. Gather my saints together unto me, those that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. At those that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. Kiswahili? Nikusanyeni wacha mungu wangu waliofanya agano nami kwa dhabiu. That is it. We are going to see God's, those people that God here is talking about. That God is saying, gather my people. And his people are those who have made a covenant with him by sacrifice. We are going to look at what is a covenant. And then we are going to see or look at what sacrifice. Because here God is saying, those who keep my covenant through sacrifice. That means... Without sacrifice, you cannot be in that covenant. So it's better or it's good for us to understand uh, those two terms. Covenants and sa sacrifice. That means that God's people or uh, sorry, that God's people or saints are such as have made a covenant a covenant with him by sacrifice that god people or saints are such as have made a covenant with him by sacrifice so we are going to look at first uh, what making a covenant with God is. What's making, what's that covenant? How God make a covenant with his people? That's one thing. Uh, then, we are going to look at why no covenant can be made with God without interposing of a respect and to a sacrifice. Those are the things that I think uh, we are going to see. And let us see uh, verse Psalms 1, 11, verse 9, what it says. Psalms 1, 11, verse 9. Let us read Hebrew 8.10. Hebrew 8.10. It, it is going to help us. Hebrew 8.10. Yasema. Maana hili ndiro agano nitokalo agana na nyumba ya Israeli. Baada ya siku zile asema buwana. Nitawapa sheria zangu katika niya zao. Na katika mioyo yao nitaziandika. Na ame nitakuwa mungu kwa na watakuwa watu wangu. Yes. That is. Then, yani, that is. Here. Paul is talking about the New Testament covenant. Which means there was an Old Testament covenant. Which went before this new covenant. So, therefore, before we understand 
the new covenant, we cannot understand the new covenant without understanding the old covenant. So, what we are going to do, first of all, is to understand uh, the old covenant first, how God made a covenant with the children of Israel, so that we may come to see the new covenant, the difference between the old covenant and the new okay. covenant. So here, I would like us to see what it happened or how God made it with his people in the Old Testament. And I would like us to read Exodus 14, 10. Exodus, sorry, Exodus 24, 10. Before that, let us read Hebrew 9, 19 and 20, before we come to that 24.10. Though it has a deeper meaning of what we are going to, to look at, I'll explain it later. Read Hebrew 9, 19, 20. Mm -hmm. Mm that is Hebrews 9, 19 and 20. So here you see there is a covenant here being made with the children of Israel. And here we have it in Hebrew 19 where it says, For when Moses had spoken every precept to all the people according to the law, he took the blood of calves and of goats with water and scarlet, scarlet wool and hyssop and sprinkled both the book and all the people was sprinkled with that blood. Kila moja nifanya nini? Arinyushiwa. Hata fitabu yote na watu wote wakafanya nini wakarushiwa hiyo damu that was a covenant which was being made to these people sasa yes. let us read exodus 24:4 maybe it can give us an insight of this covenant in exodus 24:4 what does it say in swahili Basi Musa akayandika maneno yote ya Bwana akaondoka asubuhi na mapema akajenga madhabahu chini ya mlima na nguzo mbili kwa hesabu ya kabila mbili za Israeli. Mhm mm 5 Akapeleka vijana wa wana wa Israeli walio toa sadaka za kuteketezwa that is it. And Moses wrote all the words of the Lord and rose up early in the morning and builded an altar under the hill. Which means there is no sacrifice which can, can go on without an altar. That's a very important point to understand, an altar. And altar under the hill and 12 pillars according to the 12 tribe of Israel. Because those people who are going to be in the covenant with God are the 12 tribe of Israel. Therefore, he put 12 pillars around the altar. Because this church 
was to comprise of the 12 children of who? Of Israel. Sasawa. And he sent young men of the children of Israel which offered burnt offerings and sacrificed peace offer, offering of oxen unto the Lord. So there was sacrifice. So in this covenant, there is going to be sa sacrifice. It's a covenant, but it's going to be, a, to be sacrifice. Sita in Asema, and Moses took half of the blood and put it in basins. And half of the blood he sprinkled on the altar. Half. Sasawa. And Moses took the blood and sprinkled it on the people and said, Behold, the blood of the covenant, which the Lord has made with you concerning all these words. So here, there is those words, there is the law which Moses was given by God. And he read the law in front of the people. So it, it was not just a covenant that he's going to make without the law. There was a law. And this law are those books which was sprinkled with the blood. So this covenant is going to be based on the ten comma commandments. It's a covenant because the law was read unto the people. Now, have you heard the laws of God? Have you accepted that you are going to fulfill all what has all what God has said? And yet, and they said, Amen, Amen. What have you done? What a tea. First three. First three. Yeah, you know, say what? Musa Kaenda Kawambia Watu, Manena Yote, Yabuana, Nahukumu Zaka Zote, Watu Water, Wakajibu Kasauti Moja, Wakasema, Manena Yote, Ario Nena Buana, Tutayatena. That is it. And Moses came and told the people all the words of the Lord and all the judgments. And all the people answered with one voice and said, All the words which the Lord has said, we will do. 24.3 So here we are shown that a covenant is not just made, is not just an empty promises. There is the covenant of God, there is what God want you God part there's God part and there is man part I want to make a, a covenant with you but this is what I want you to do do you accept then wakasemba tumefanya nini tumekubali so that covenant was ratified with the blood and that was the covenant which the children of Israel made with God so the altar here represented God, the first and chief party in the covenant. And the 12 pillars of stone represented the other confederate party, the people of Israel, who are to come before the Lord as his obedient people. So the altar here represents who? God. He is the altar. And this God, when you come to, as we are going to see, this God, when you come to the New Testament, the altar here is who? Christ, Christ. Jesus. Because there is no sacrifice in the Old Testament which could be done outside the, yeah. the altar. In the New Testament also, there is no sacrifice to God which can be done outside our Lord Jesus Christ. So Jesus Christ is the true altar. And that's why in present generation, many people, many pastors, they make 
a great mistake because they think that madhabahu ambayo wanaita altar at happened hiyo yani pale wametengeneza pawe pale juu ambaye pale pastor anaenda kuhubiria they call that place an altar but they don't understand that you can stand there but that is not an altar in the new testament you don't need any yani we, we cannot call any place you know an altar because our altar is where is it because the sacrifice now is not done outwardly it is done e and the sacrifice that now is being done it is us sacrificing to god through our heart our heart so without christ in you whatever you do because it is a sacrifice it can only be accepted if truly it is in line with who with jesus christ because christ is our own altar so we don't need an altar in the new testament we don't need to build any place and call it an altar an altar that is being misguided misguided you read verse 10 what does it say the same exodus 24 10 inasema wakamuona mungu wa israeli chini ya miguu yake palikuwa na kama sakafu iliyofanyizwa kwa yakuti samawi kama zile mbingu zenyewe kwa usafi wake yes and they saw the god of israel and there was under his feet as it were a paved work of sapphire stone and as it were the body of heaven in his clearness so when this altar was set by moses and these people accepted the words of moses in fact god mysteriously revealed himself and to these people walimuo walimuona they saw god so how they saw it it is not we should not start speculating because god can reveal himself in different way but truly because these people accepted the covenant uh, god's covenant and they said amen and that covenant truly they saw god they saw god i would like us uh, to read lamentation uh, and see what god does when people break the covenant lamentation 2 what does it say jinsi jinsi bwana alivyo mfunika binti sayuni kwa wengu katika hasira yake ameutupa tako mbinguni hata nchi hu sorry jinsi bwana alivyo mfunika binti sayuni kwa wingu katika hasira yake ameutupa toka mbinguni hata nchi huo uzuri wa Israeli wala haku kikumbuka kiti cha miguu yake katika siku ya hasira yake so you see now when god make a covenant with the people you become his foot stool kigeza nasema god remember not his foot foot stool in the day of his anger meaning when people make a covenant with god you become part of god god is in heaven his head is heaven but you become like his footstool yani yeye anafanya kazi na nani na nyinyi na nyinyi that's what he means here so wakati alikasirika he remembered yani in his anger akasahau his footstool meaning they had made a covenant with god walikuwa wame agree lakini ilifika pahali wakaanza kwenda kulingana na yani na tamaa sawa sorry 
So, you know heaven is his throne and the church is his footstool. Therefore, when the church was desolate, it is said in Lamentation 2.1, God remembered not his footstool in the day of his anger. So, on Israel part, there was present in the covenant, there was present Moses and Aaron and Nadab and Abihu and 70 of the elders of Israel and they were to worship afar off to express reverence to this great God who, who was to enter into covenant with him. Hebrews 1, 24. Kisha Bwana akamwambia Musa, "Kweni wewe na Haruni na Nabiu na Abiu na watu sabini wa wazee wa Israeli mkafikirie Bwana mkasujudie kwa mbali." Mkasujudie mka mkasujudie kwa mbali. Why? In fact, ukiangalia pale, how what water they washed worship a far off. Kingereza inasema, Kingereza inasema, and he said unto Moses, Come up unto the Lord, thou and Aaron, Aaron, Nadab, and Abihu, and seventy of the elders of Israel, and worshipped ye a far off. Two, and Moses alone shall come near the Lord. But they shall not come nigh, neither shall the people go up with him. What does that mean? This means whenever when you come to the New Testament, unaona yule mtu alikaribia sana ni nani? Ni Mo? Yes, ni Moses. How watu wengine walika afar off. That means even in the New Testament when we wake and when we make a covenant with God Sometimes we make a, yani we make a covenant without even knowing the God we are making a covenant with. Ni kwa sababu when somebody want to become a Christian anakuja anasema mimi nimekubali nani? Yesu Kristo. So which means once you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you accept him. That means you have entered into a covenant. But you are understanding as a person to know which covenant you, are, you have entered. You are very far from who? From God. You don't even know that God. Some wanaingia into that covenant kwa sababu wamesikia watu wengine wamefanya nini? Wameingia. Lakini as to this covenant, what it means, wengi wanakuanga bali sana. Hata kuelewa ni nini. In fact, 90% of Christian in this world they don't even understand how they have made the covenant with God. And that's why they don't even respect that covenant as the children of Israel did. They never respected it. Which means hata wakati inafanywa walikuwa mbali sana. Only Moses. That means our Lord Jesus Christ ambaye he is our representative and by he is the atonement he has given us atonement with god he is the only one who is very near unto who and to god. god but we who have made that covenant with god through our lord jesus christ some of us we are very far from who from god we don't even know him we don't even know. And that's why many people go astray. Because many are ignorant. The, the preachers of the gospel, they don't teach the people what is it to make a covenant with God. So many, they are just in their church. They don't even understand what's a covenant. That's why they do what they want to do. Even these people of Israel, they never understood truly what that covenant meant. Sasawa. So, 
it is good sometimes to understand some of these things because if we don't understand, they are very, yeah, the things are very serious because Ababu, uh, we shall even break the covenant because if you don't know the covenant between you and God, that means you can break it any any time. Any time. You can break it any time, and that's what uh, and that's what happens. So here. There is something that we have seen that by the sacrifice, that means we can, by burnt offering and peace offering in this covenant, it was declared that we cannot enter into a covenant into a covenant without uh, go, uh, with God. We cannot enter a covenant with God without sacrifices. So However, to enter a covenant, there is a, sa a sacrifice. That means there is no way you can enter with God into a covenant without a, sa a sacrifice. That's a mistake people make. They want to make a covenant with God in the New Testament, but they don't want to, sa to sacrifice. As we are going to see what sacrifice means. So, there were burnt offering to show the means of their propitiation with God and peace offering to show their thankfulness for the peace and salvation which by it they obtained. That's why they had to sacrifice as we are going to see by and by. So here we have seen that the first covenant was not dedicated without the blood of a sacrifice. Well then, God is a principal part covenanting and binding himself to the people by his promises. There is no way you, as a person, the only way you can make a covenant with God, because God is the one who have started the covenant. It is God who wants to make a covenant with you. Koivo, the work, those are the, pro sorry, that, those are the promises of God. And those promises, they don't start with us. Sinikweli? Yes. They don't start with us. It is God who has promised to bind us into a covenant. Meaning, the same God is the only one also who is going to, to reveal what you are supposed to do in order to be in the, co in the covenant. Sio wewe, kwa hivyo ni kumanisha, now hapa tunambiwa, God, all what God wants, when he has made a covenant with you, your work is only to, sa to sacrifice. If you, eh? Yeah? The covenant, Eh, ni kuna kitu inahitaji kutoka kwako mm -hmm. ili utimize ndio ufanye nini ukamilishe ndio ukamilishe that covenant you has is only to sa because this is the god's work not your work yeah, yeah you are just a creature you are far you are, you are fallen you are a sinner kwa jina la Yesu ni kama kusema ni sababu nitampa wewe kazi ile kitu inahitaji wewe kwako that is it. The only thing you need to come with is just the doc, the document. So you sacrifice yourself and in Samoja we are happy. So that is a covenant. That's how God makes a covenant. And we are going to see why people they don't want to sacrifice. Why are people defeated just to do that? Because that's the only thing that God wants from the people. Sasawa. So here, we see, we have seen in the Old Testament that God, that's what God made. And the problem you'll see with the, with the Old Testament church with God is only that they never did in accordance with the car. With the covenant. They failed. Io too. They failed to keep their obligations. 
they failed. The sacrifice, they were doing the sacrifice. But here now we are going to see. Because you'll say, most of them, they were sacrificing. Because they, they were doing it every day and evening in the temple. Sini kweli? Si wikuwa wanaenda na kondo na pereka pare. Lakini the same God, ukiangalia for example, let us, sit, let us go to Isaiah uh, chapter 1. Start from verse 2. Inasema, Sikieni enyi mbingu, tega sikio, e inchi, kwa maana buwana amenena, nime wa nimewalisha watoto na kuwalea na wame niasi. You see now, hear O heavens and give ear O earth. For the Lord has spoken, I have nourished and brought up children and they have rebelled against me. Mm -hmm. I have brought up. Yeah, because the cover, God made a covenant with them. He was their sole provider. But only, the, the only thing that he was supposed to do is just to sacrifice. And this sacrifice is just, you know here, I want, I want you to see. Because sometimes people would say, these people, they were sacrificing. Walikuwa naenda, wanapeleka kodo, wanaenda na ngombe, wanaenda pale. But kuna pale yata niwaambia, hata mukiniletea hizi ngombe mnaleta. Mimi, sikuli nyama. You get the point? Alifika pale akawambia mimi I don't eat goat's meat. Mufikirie sasa kwa sababu mnaleta sacrifice, mufikirie hiyo ndio nataka. So what happened? Hawakuweza kutofautisha the true sacrifice with the physical sacrifice. They never understood the true meaning of sacrifice. The heart sacrifice Badaya kuona through the sacrifice waone that they themselves are supposed to sacrifice from their heart to deny themselves, to deny covetousness, to deny envy, because that is a sacrifice. Wao hawa kuona hivo. Wao waliona ata nikifanya dhambi so long as niko na ngombe nipereke ama kondo sasa mimi niko sawa. But unto God, these types, God was the, using these physical type or these types kuafundisha about self-denial. Because self-denial is, is a sacrifice. So the same things happen today. As we are going to see. Nandi unasikia hapa katika verse 3, not verse 3, Eh, Ebu soma 4 tuone Hole wake taifa lenye dhambi watu wanao chukua mzigo wa uovu wazao wa watenda mabaya watoto wanao haribu wamemwacha Bwana wamemdharau yeye aliye mtakatifu wa Israeli wamefarakana naye na kurudi nyuma That is it Ah, oh, sinful nation, a people laden with iniquity, a seed of evildoers, children that are corruptors. They have forsaken the Lord. They have provoked the Holy One of Israel unto anger. They are gone away backward. You see, people never understand that this is a church. How what to work with them? Ilikuwa ni kani? Which had made a ka? A covenant. Na ukisoma pale walisema wakati Musa alisoma walisema namna gani? Tutayatenda. Haya yote tutafanya nini? Tutayatenda. Tutayatenda na wakakubali. Lakini after some time ndio nasikia Mungu tena akisema hawa ni watu aina gani? Ukisoma verse 5 inasema namna gani? 5 inasema. Mm -hmm. That is Isaiah chapter 1 verse 5 eh. Mbona mnataka kupigwa hata sasa? Hata mkazidi kuasi Kichwa chote ni kigonjo, moyo wote umezimia. That is it. Walikuwa from the soul of the foot. Sita inasema, from the soul of the foot, even at the head, there is no soundness. Walikuwa wameazi kabisa. Walikuwa wamefika pahali. Eh, kabisa, they were against 
the will of God. They were no longer in the covenant. Walikuwa covenant wamefanya nini? Wamewachana naye. Na ndio nataka uone kuna pahali amesema acha nikuangalie. That is verse 11. Hebu soma 11. Yuyu Isaya inasema. Huu <laughs> huu wingi wa sadaka zenu mnazonitolea una faida gani? Asema Bwana Nimejaa mafuta ya kafara za kondoo waume na mafuta ya wanyama walionona nami sifurahii damu ya ngombe wala ya wana kondoo wala ya mbuzi waume You see now here to what purpose is a multitude of your sacrifices unto me What is what purpose Ni kwa sababu hawa watu they took the shell of sacrifice and they, they threw away the substance of the sac- of the sacrifice wakabaki tu na shell wanataka tu kwenda kanisa waonekane wanaenda ku sacrifice na walikuwa wanaenda na, ma- na mangombe nyingi sana ati kwa sababu Mungu alisema fanya nini lakini when you come to their heart empty, empty. They were, their heart were against God. So that's why God is asking them to what purpose? You yani watu wakikuangalia nje wanaona wewe ni mtu unapenda nani? Mungu sana kwa sababu ukiwa na ngombe unaleta ufanye sacrifice dionekane. It is the same way in this generation. People have taken a form of religion, of religion. But they have forgotten the substance that God want you to be a new creature. And that's why we have people wanasema Bwana asifiwe. Lakini wakisimama wanatukanana. Lakini wakienda kwa kanisa wanataka waonekane ni wa nini? Ni wa kanisa. They are, we have people in the church. Paka wengine they want to be politicians. Bado tamaa ya mwili iko. Lakini wakienda pale unakuta wanataka tena wa, yani wasimame katika kanisa ati wao wanapenda Mungu covetousness envy wako naye sasa hapo ndio unaulizwa to what purpose is your sacrifice kwa nini una sacrifice yourself tunaenda kanisa uonekane and yet you don't want to change kwa nini what would you lose now that's the generation we are in now today anataka awe ndani na anataka this world and you want to be a church goer anataka ku sacrifice hata wengine wanaenda fasting wanaenda hata wiki moja ama mwezi mmoja ati kwa sababu wao ni wa Kristo they are fasting because of something and yet they are empty God doesn't ya yeah, Mungu akiangalia in the heart there is no different between the church goers and heathen or pagans afadhali pagan kwa sababu huyu mtu anaita jina na ndipoza hata kuna pali Mungu alisema mmeaibisha mpaka jina langu to the heathens. Sasa nilikuwa naambia wa Israeli kanisa. Maana hata wale pagans wanashangaa. Kama Mungu wenyu wako hivi. Kabisa huyo Mungu mnasema ni Mungu wa kweli kama wako kama nyinyi vile mnakaa. Sasa nyinyi kweli mnaambisha nani? Mungu. Mna mnaniaibisha. Mna na ndio ukisoma verse 12 inasema nini? Verse 12 inasema nini? Hiyo hiyo Isaya. Eh. Mjapo ile kuonekana mbele zangu ni nani aliyetaka neno hili mikononi mwenu kusikanyaga nyua zangu. You get the point. Anasema when you come to appear before me who has required this at your hand to treat my coat. Sasa nataka kuambia nini? Unajua watu wanafikiria Ukienda katika kanisa upeleke bahasha tatu. Upeleke tithe, upeleke offering, upeleke mambo yote hata pesa mingi sana upeleke kanisa. Watu wanafikiri wewe you are appeasing God. At sasa wewe Mungu God is going to love you. God is going to bless you. Sasa Mungu anauliza, mnapokuja, hii mnaleta kanisa nani amewaitisha? Unajua watu wanafikiri kupeleka pesa kanisa ni ndio ndio kubarikiwa. Because hao watu walikuwa wamefika wakienda kutoa tithes katika kanisa they were very good kutoa pesa 
In fact, walikuwa wanafikiria wakipeleka kanisa the temple pesa waj, pesa ijaye sasa walikuwa wanaona wamefanya kazi ya Mungu. Na walikuwa they were very happy about it. So God is rebuking them through Isaiah. And that's why you'll find that even the Old Testament prof, yani, yani, uh, 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 church goers they never liked the prophets. Manake walikuwa wanafanya nini? Wana wao? Sasa wakiwaambia ukweli wanakasirika. Today waambia watu kanisa hizo pesa wanapeleka hata tithes ni bure. They will hate you. Kwa tasema sasa wewe unataka tufanye nini? Kwani Mungu anasema tufanye nini? They don't want to know the truth, but they, they, they are not because they don't know, they don't want to be taught. Ile ujinga wameshika ati Mungu anataka wanataka kufanya hivyo. Walikuwa hivyo. Sio mimi nimeandika. When you come to appear before me who has required this at your hand to treat my court ni kumaanisha wewe unaenda nikanakoma mungu ataka kusema hii kanisa ambayo inahitanishwa na jina langu it is my court wewe unakuja na pesa nani amekubali wewe ukuje ku treat my court na hiyo pesa atunaita kanisani and yet you cannot obey my law sasa hiyo ni ya nini? Hata kuna pahali aliwaambia wacha tuone hiyo verse. Isaya, sorry, Psalms 50:16 nasema namna gani? Psalms 50:16. What does it say? It says uh, but unto the wicked God save what has thou to do to declare my statutes or that thou shouldest take my covenant in thy mouth ebu soma kiswahili kiswahili nasema bali mtu asiye haki mungu amwambia una nini wewe kuitangaza sheria yangu na kuliweka agano langu kinywani mwako that is a person ambaye he is not, yani he purport himself because a wicked person here and i want you to see you might be in the covenant of god and yet though you belong to that covenant you know though you say you belong to that covenant and yet you don't do in accordance with the will of god that means you are not in actual sense outwardly watu wakikuona wanaona kweli wewe you belong to the to, to where to the, church? to the church but inwardly because god looks at the heart you are against the law of god you cannot do as per the covenant the spirit of god akikuangalia wewe unahesabiwa kuwa wicked you are a wicked person because you cannot be a child of god by name only and yet you go there you do opposite sasa nataka kusema most of the preachers ambaye wanaenda wanaingia katika kanisa la Mungu they pretend at wanafundisha the covenant sio kama tunaoana wana pretend at wao they are in the covenant of god and yet they teach their own things For those who doesn't know you might think that that person is in covenant with who with God. Sasa hapa ndio anauliza But unto the wicked God said What has thou to do to declare my statutes? Wewe unasa nani amekupatia ukuje uongee juu ya my covenant? Kwa sababu gani? Or that thou shouldest take my covenant in thy mouth. Nikusema unaenda kuambia watu juu ya the gospel of salvation because that's the covenant of god with his people. Yes. Lakini when you are going to declare this gospel, wewe mwenyewe you are not you don't obey that covenant. Sasa ndio mko nakuuliza nani basi amekuruhusu kwenda kuongea juu ya nini? Maneno yangu. Maneno yangu. Na wewe mwenyewe hauwezi fanya hiyo hiyo nena ambayo 
Na ndio unaona ukisoma 17 anasema namna gani? Kiswahili. Kiswahili 17 anasema, mm. "Maana wewe umechukia maonyo na kuyatupa maneno yangu nyuma yako." Eh. Yes. Sing thou hatest instruction and castest my words behind thee. Sasa nani wewe you don't want instruction. Wewe hauwezi kufundishwa, umekataana na jia zangu. Na neno langu umeliweka nyuma yako, hauendi na neno langu kulingana kama vile yani linasema. So you teach a false gospel, a gospel of prosperity. Sasa nani amekuruhusu? Meaning ni kama Mungu anataka kusema wewe hata kana kwamba unaenda kuhubiri hiyo ijiri sio mimi nimefanya nini? Hiyo ni yako. Wewe enda lakini mimi hatuko na nani? Siko na wewe. Siko na wewe. Wewe umechukua tu neno langu, unalitoa kwa midomo yako, hali wewe you don't belong unto my covenant. Kwa hivyo it is good to understand that to be a child of God you must adhere to the covenant. Umekubali Yesu Kristo? Yes. What is the teaching of our Lord? 18. Eh? Yeah, 18 nasema ulipomuona mwivi ulikuwa radhi naye. Eh? Yeah. Ukashirikiana na wazinzi. You see? Una, yani yeah. kana kwamba ukiona huyu wa bandei unakuwa radhi naye lakini pande nyingine wewe unakuwa na na ushirikiano. Na usi... In fact kana to... kwamba sheria ya Mungu kuna ile unafuatilia na kuna ile unaona hii hapana waje nifanye nini? Wacha hii endelee. Kwa sababu inakufaidi. Ina ina That is it. When thou sowest a thief, ni kama this present generation. When thou sowest the thief, then thou consentest with him and has been partaker with the adulterers. Wewe ukiona mwizi unakubaliana nani? Na ukiangalia hii generation, utaona those who call themselves Christian and those things we see them in the time of politics wengi wanasema wakati wanaambiwa mtu ni mwizi wanasema namna gani afadhali huyu anafanya nini anaiba anaiba anafanya nini anatuletea wale mapasta wako kwa makanisa they are, they are in the forefront wakati nyinyi mnasema somebody is a thief at, at nini wanasema wao kama mtu hajashikwa ama whatever we cannot condemn them lakini pesa wacha tuchukue pesa tuziombe tuziombe kwa hivyo nini wako na haja naye pesa pesa ndio nataka tuwaombe sifanye nini hadi sasa zitakuwa safi manake ati pasta ameshika pesa zimeletwa kwa kanisa kwa kikapu pale anaombea pesa nimewaambia ama nilikuwa nimwambia hapa nikawaambia any inanimate thing Beat money or whatever haina dhambi haina dhambi kitu yoyote ambaye tunatumia the only creature in god's sight that is sinful is only man hata ngombe ikikupiga teke ikuue ushaikusikia ngombe imepelekwa kotini hayo zipelekwa hata umbwa ikikuuma mwenyewe ndio anafanya nini anashikwa anaulizwa The meaning the only creature ambaye amepatiwa moral understanding na nafikia wasimame katika ukweli ni binadamu pekee sasa pesa na ni makaratasi unahesaje kusema unaenda kuombea pesa ndio siwe safi na yule analeta sasa wewe unataka kusema wewe enda iba ukileta itakuwa safi itakuwa safi manake sisi sisi ni, ni, ni we are men of god tumeitwa na Mungu na tukiziombea tunaweza kustumia that is the narrative ambaye tuko naye in the present generation church kanisa ambaye tunasema ndiyo kanisa ya siku hizi na ni nasikia hapa huyu the service anasema wewe hata ukiona mwizi mnashirikiana hivyo ndivyo alikuwa sasa wewe unahesaje kuchukua my covenant with you useme ati wewe unafundisha ukweli wangu that is wrong kwa hivyo lazima to understand eh, eh, 
the, sorry, the work of the covenant and what the covenant means ni kwa sababu ukisoma 19 inasema namna mm-hmm. gani katika that psalm 19 inasema umekiachia kinywa chako kunena mabaya na ulimi wako watunga hila you see thou givest thy mouth to evil and thou tongue frameth deceit Angalia the present generation. Ni ukitaka kuwajua, waangalie hata wakati wa, wa yani wakati wa election, ndio utajua watu wako namna gani. These people who are seeking elective post, they are the same people who goes to our churches. Si ni kweli? Ndio wamejaza huko. Kinywa chao is full of evil. Wanaongea mtu akiongea unasikia ni matusi. Lakini itakuja kuona the same people ndio wamejaa kwa makanisa na wanasema Bwana afanye nini? Asifiwe. Yeah. So nani anadanganya huu? Who is fooling who? Is the only thing is that we are fooling ourselves. Ourself. Hakuna pahali tunaenda, hakuna watu pahali wanaenda. Kanisa imeingia katika shida kubwa sana na haiwezi kujitoa pale. Because The covenant which the church made with God in the New Testament imekanyagiwa chi? chini. Imekanyagiwa chini. There was a covenant with the church in the early church. But that covenant kabisa kabisa saa hii nobody cares about that covenant. Nobody want to know what it says. Every person yeye amekuwa materialistic. Hali yake ni pesa, mali ya dunia the covenant is trodden at a foot. Kwa hivyo lazima tuelewe what the covenant means. Sasa I want us a little bit to see the meaning, the true meaning of sacrifice. Because sometimes if we look it superficially we might not get the meaning and that's why people have gone wrong men they don't understand themselves and they don't know when god make a covenant what this sacrifice is how are we supposed to sacrifice it ourselves and for us to understand it it is first of all to understand that it is god who is, who is making a covenant and it is us only who are supposed to, sa- to, to sacrifice. sacrifice. So here uh, while the life of life is giving the life of life because God is life. Mm-hmm. Sasa? Yes. And the life of God is gi- giving. By nature God is love. And God, his nature is just to give. So giving is the life of God, of God. To give, that's the life of God. Uh, so here, the life or a persistent of form is taking. That means us, because we are the form created by God. We are a creature created by God. He has given us a form. We had a soul. And we came from God as a soul. And here when we came in this world, we were given a form, that is a body, our body. And in that form, ours is only taking. Is only taking. By nature, ours is just to receive you see now ours is just taking for the form is wasted as it is excellent and that's why you see even if we have a body that body cannot survive that's why you, you keep on giving so ours is just to give 
not to receive. To receive. Ours is just to take it. We take in order to survive. To survive. But God always gives. So if the body is to continue, it must draw fresh material from outside itself in order to repair its losses. Kama huu mwili utaendelea, lazima u receive from outside itself. Ndiifanya nini? Ilipee na dio yedere. So the body must grasp, keep build itself what is it has grabbed else it cannot persist. Kwa hivyo kazi yetu ni kuchukua, ni kupata, ni kupata ndio tuweze kuishi. And why are we like that? Ile kitu imetufanya tuwe namna hiyo it is the body which we are given. Otherwise the image of God because we are created with the image of God in us if truly we want to yani to imitate the image of God our nature is supposed to be like that nature of who of God of doing what giving Sijui kama tumeelewa na pale So our nature is we are being created in order to go back to who to God because the nature of the life of God is giving And us, because we came in this body, this form ourselves, we have a tendency of wanting always to receive. That's why binadamu akiwa katika huu mwili anataka saa yote afanye nini? Apewe. na kuchukua kila kitu anataka kwa nini? Yake. Anataka kupeana. That is it. Why he is not always fulfilling his promises. That's why yeah, that's why he'll never fulfill because sababu there is a nature in man ambaye after we fell ambaye iliingia binadamu. God is giving and we are supposed to be like our God. But we came into a nature where we want everything to take to be take, to, to receive everything unto ourselves. You, you see now. So here Because God has seen that we yeah, any, we have fallen creatures and we are we have gone in the wrong way. That's why God want to make a covenant with us. And that's why he is saying, I'm going to make a covenant with you. I'm going to give you my law now. And your work is only now to sac- to sacrifice because you have you have entered into a situation where you want always to receive and that is not my nature I'm not like that Mimi siko kama namna gani namna hiyo Mimi siko hivyo So if you want to be come mine lastima I'm going to give you my laws which you are going to follow and if you are going to follow these laws you are going to become a new creature who is going to be like me and you are going to attain my love where you are going to be like me meaning you have to sacrifice all your other nature last of all you sacrifice that's why when you make a, a covenant with god there must be a, a sacrifice mwanake hii ni ku sacrifice usifikirie atikupatiana ni rahisi Mnajua hivyo? Ni ngumu. Kupatiana ni ngumu. You must have outlet. Kupatiana and in fact it is for every person. Hata wenye wako nazo anataka kuogezea, he just want to to receive, to hold everything to be his. And that's why hapa duniani kila mmoja anangangana awe as with as much as possible ambaye inaitwa ni yake yake akijaga hii nyumba si ati ati hiyo haiwezi tosha yeye anataka ajaga iki nyingine na nyingine so so we can trace in the religions of the world for four great stage of instruction in the law of sacrifice 
Lazima tujue first man has taught to sacrifice part of his material possession in order to gain increased material property. Ukiangalia by nature diuelewe hii. If we, if we don't go deeper to honor that sacrifice, let us look it superficially in this world. Uone by nature ndio mtu hata apate hii mali ya dunia hii. Kwa sababu kila mmoja anatafuta mali. Huyo mtu wa mwili ndio apate hii mali na awe atakuja kupata hii mali, anaambiwa lazima ajinyime. Na sacrifice masa yake yote akisoma. Si ndio tunaambiwa? Wewe soma. Usipo soma Uzipo weka bidii hautapata. Hapo unafundishwa nini? You must sacrifice yourself. Wale wengine wakienda kucheza, wewe usifanye nini? Usicheze. Usicheze kama wengine. Kwa hivyo ujinyi ujinyime. Ndio ungetaka kuwa kama wengine wakienda hapo unaenda pale. Lakini ukifanya hivyo, your future is going to be good. Sasa hapo ndio unaona sasa even in the natural life sacrifice in order to gain for the future you must sa- sacrifice ni kweli so when you come even to the spiritual if you want to gain spiritually come you can sacrifice because of this worldly good that means also there is another sacrifice to get eternal riches this you yani there is that sasa hii ni ngumu sana hii ni ngumu sana kwa sababu gani it goes against the will of ne? nature it goes against the will of nature and that's why you'll see people have never understood why every sacrifice in the old testament was was in the altar was sacrificed through the fire kupitia nini moto hivi ndio kwanza hii moto watu hajui ni nini there is no sacrifice without the fire fire meaning it is not any thing there is going to be pain ni kuenga na ndio nasikia watu hajai kujua pale john alisema Ufalume wa binguni ni wa nini? Ni wa kumengana, wa kumenga? Na wale wanangenganda ndio watafanya nini? Wataipata. Watu hajui kwa nini Mungu alisema hivyo. Sio kitu watu wataipata hivyo. You know Christianity Satan made something or brought something in the church ambaye few will understand. How? He came with a doctrine of historical Christ. Yesu Kristo alitukufia pale msalabani na sisi tumefanya nini? Tumeokolewa na tunaenda wapi? Binguni. Just that ndio watu wanajua. Hiyo ndio watu wanafanya nini? Wanajua. But when you come to sacrifice that one nobody is taught in the church kuna mambo mengi sana nitakuja kufundisha nyinyi muone mambo ya ajabu nobody anajua satan akachukua mapastors wale wanafundisha makanisa akawafunika macho awakawa kanisa ni kuambiwa tunaenda wapi mbinguni not knowing that christ mwenyewe our savior our lord yeye mwenyewe ndiyo kabisa atushidanie He went through the fire. Tunaelewana? Yeah. And he is our exa- example. Sasa si tunafikiria kwa sababu Christ alifanya sisi kazi yetu ni kufanya nini? Ni kusema tu tuliokolewa, mimi nikiwa na tamaa zangu za mwili, nikiwa mwisti, nikiwa namna gani? My mimi niko sa? Christ alifanya nini? Alinikufia na ameniokoa. Sasa wewe unafika pale wengi billions wako kwa makanisa wamesimamia pale na hawajui that there is a lot 
that you need to do. Hawaelewi dhambi ni nini? Hawaelewi sacrifice ni nini? Hawaelewi. You see now. So you see that in this world to meona the man give up something he valued. The man gave up something he valued to ensure future prosperity to himself. Unaona hapa dunia wale wanajinyima katika maisha ya kila siku wanajinyima na kwa kweli wanakuja wanapa wanapata. Lakini ukita, ukija katika Ukristo hakuna mtu anataka kusacrifice. Hakuna. Sasa so, so, when you come to Christianity Heaven is to be won. Happiness is to be enjoyed on the other side of death. And when we say death here, we mean that the true happiness of a child of God who is in covenant with God, the joy of that you can only get it through death is the first thing and this death starts in this world when you are alive the way we are how we must keep on dying we must keep on dying meaning sisi lazima tukiwa wa kristo wa kweli lazima tuwe dead tukifanya nini tukikufa Manake, what we, we and want to die ni huu mwi mwili na hii death itaanza wakati sisi wenyewe our nature our understanding itatuingia na tuelewe dhambi ni nini tunaelewana that means a considerable step forward is to be made when a man learn to give up the things for which his body craved for the sake of a distant good which he cannot see nor dem demonstrate that means heaven sisi ambaye ni wa kristo unless you understand the gospel of salvation unless you understand what you are after because if you are just going to talk about heaven if you are just going to talk about a kingdom of god that you are going to go after you come of this body and yet you don't understand who the character who are supposed to be in that kingdom hiyo ni kumaanisha hata wewe mwenyewe ukisema unaenda mbinguni haujui unafanya nini unaenda wa haujui kule unaenda hauelewi Nikana kwamba wewe unafikiri miguni utaingia pale na mwili yako yote vile wewe ulizaliwa na tamaa zako zote so so long as Yesu Kristo alikufa pale msalabani wewe you are a candidate of he heaven lakini watu waabiwa there is a work to do we must sacrifice lazima tukatae tuka lazima to attain the character of our lord and that's why people have never known wakati Christ alichukua huu mwili wetu alienda akasurubiwa na huu mwili mpaka aka yani mpaka hii mwili akafa ni kumaanisha huu mwili tamaza mwili hata wakati Christ anaenda in the wilderness to be tried anaambiwa namna gani ukininamia eh yeah? nitakupatia nini you see how many christians hata waambiwa falume wote Anaambiwa nitakupatia kashaba pale. Anafanya nini? Anainama, anainamia shetani. Anaitikia. Kwa nini Christ alitufundisha hiyo? People don't want to know. He was in the wilderness akajaribiwa lakini akafanya nini? Akakataa, akakataa. So the same trial we are going through. How are we going to overcome it? Unless we sacrifice tamaa zote za mwili any promises of this world unasema wacha ikae kama hiyo ndio itanifanya nitajirike ama niwe nini wacha ikae wacha ikae 
Kwa hivyo ni kumaanisha ufalme wa binguni the ma it is a covenant with a sac- sacrifice. Without sacrifice you don't belong to that covenant. You don't. Na ndio sasa tukirudi katika our verse inasema namna gani labda tuielewe. Psalms ngapi? Tusome. Nikusanyeni wacha Mungu wangu waliofanya agano nami kwa dhabihu. Unasikia? Gather my saints together unto me. Wafanya nini? Gather tu wakusa? Wakusanye. Wakusanye. Ambaye ni nani? Those that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. Hivyo ndio inamaanisha. Kwa hiyo kumaanisha they have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. Meaning hawa ni wale kabisa they have come into my covenant wameikubali na hii covenant na hii kukubali is through sa? sacrifice. Si ati ni kitu imepatikana ati ati juu juu hivi ni sacrifice ni kujitolea wamejikana 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 wamekataa mambo mengi sana wameona mambo mengi nafanywa ya mwili na tamaa nyingi wanakataa the sacrifice mpaka wanakosana na watu mpaka watu hapa duniani wanaona kama wao ni wajinga mpaka watu na kama wao ni mjinga kuna watu mimi huona kama mimi ni mjinga but i say wacha waone kwa sababu i don't care how people judge me All what I care is how God sees me and how he judges me. Manaka nikiangalia watu hata hii ukweli wewe sitafuta. Manaka wengine wataka kusema sasa wewe unataka kutuambia unatafuta huko kwani ukweli itakusaidia na nini? But a sacrifice. Wengine wakifanya mambo makubwa hapa duniani wakitaka kuwa hivi na pale. Wewe unasema you don't want to know. Hiyo ni yao wacha wafanye. So a sacrifice it is very important katika ukristo wa kweli tusidanganywe hii jia ni ya kumwendana hebu tutafute hiyo verse ambaye imeandikwa na iliandikwa wakati wa John it is Matthew 11 12 but start from 11 inasema namna gani hebu soma inasema <laughs> amini na waambieni haja wanaokea mtu katika wazao wa wanawake aliye mkuu kuliko Yohana mpatisaji wala haki ni aliye mdogo katika ufalme wa mbinguni ni mkuu kuliko yeye. Mhm. Tangu siku za Yohana mpatisaji hata sasa ufalme wa mbinguni hupatikana kwa nguvu. Na wenye nguvu wa utepa. That is it. And from the days Sorry, and from the days of John the Baptist until now the kingdom of heaven suffered violence and the violent take it by force nikusema wenye nguvu tunatafanya nini and they take it by force hapa tawa kuambiwa ni mengi a christian anaweza pitia wale ambao watauteka wale ambao wataingia binguni hata watafanywa mambo makuu magzito in this world lakini through their persistence through their self denial wataingia lakini wenye kabisa itakuwa saa yote ni kunugunika mamari. Kashida kidogo ikiingia unaanza kumama. You don't see the glory of God in that covenant you are in. Hauoni wewe ufalme wa binguni hautaupata. Si wa watu ambaye ni coward. Inasemekana those people who doesn't want to deny themselves for the sake of the kingdom of God they are cowards. Sisi kama tunaelewana? They are cowards. Lakini ukiangalia katika macho ya mwili, ukiangaliwa wewe ambaye unangengana self denial, you are the courageous. Wewe ndio mtu ambaye ni courageous. Huyu mtu wa mwili ambaye hataki kujiumiza hata kidogo ndio apate ufalme wa mbinguni, he's a, ca- a coward. He's a coward. Manake yeye akipata kashida kidogo, anaanza kunugunika. Yeye akiambiwa ni self denial he cannot be the lord of his body Yeye anataka kuwa the servant of his body Tujue kama tunaelewana He want to serve his his interest of the body of this life Mwili kisema hivi hivyo ndio anataka He cannot He cannot control the body However he has become a servant of the body that is a coward 
Lakini yule ambaye he want to be above his body. That is what? That is a, a, a courageous man. Huyo ndio mtu ambaye anangengana apate ufalme wa mbinguni. Manake huu mwili ukiwa unakutawala wewe huu mwili unakupeleka wapi? Jahana? Jahana. Jahana. <coughs> huu mwili unakupeleka jahana. Lakini kama unatawala mwili wewe you are coming above your body. Siku hiyo ni kusema wewe you, are, you want to be like eh, angels. You want to be like angels. Na ndio unaona ukiangalia wa Kristo wengi. Pale tunaambiwa wengi ambaye wamesimama katika huu kweli, waka, wakajua ukweli, most of them hata kuoa hawafanya nini? Hawakuoa. People have never known why. Hawakuoa. Mimi anataka kukaa. Kushinda nini? Ashinde mwili. Mwili sio ati ndio natawala yeye. Azikuje pahali za mekane mwili ndio nafanya nini? Inamzuia. Ama ina that's being courageous. Na kwa lakini Biblia inasema kama hauwezi kaa oa. Lakini ujue na wewe kuna mambo mengi sana utafanya nini? Utapitia. Utazuiliwa. Kuna mambo mengi yatakupita. Kuna mambo mengi yatakupita. Nikusema wakati utakuja kuangalia the stages of heaven utakuja kuona ni stages gani wewe ukiwa umeoa hauta attain in this world. Because heaven starts here. Yeah, because heaven starts where? Here. Utaona kuna stage wewe utazuiliwa kabisa kwa sababu you cannot attain that stage. Kwa sababu umeoa. It will be a hindrance. How to lose heaven? But but itakukata miguu. Yaani hautaingia vile wengine wanaingia kama vile wanaona mtu kama Paul aliingia. You know sometimes people they don't understand. When you come to the history katika the gospel. Si unasoma juu ya ya ya, ya, ya mitume. Nani ushaikusikia ukiambiwa juu ya bibi yake? Ushai unajua bibi ya Peter? Ushaikusikia bibi ya John? Atuambie John alikuwa kwa nini? Anyway that is another topic for another time. But tunataka tuone that mwili there is a sacrifice katika ufalme wa mbinguni. There is a sacrifice na watu wanatakiwa wazione kana kwamba ni kitu rahisi. Hapana, it is not easy. It is something which needs self denial ya hali ya juu sana. So a considerable step forward yani was made a man to learn to give up the things of which the body craved for sake craved for the sake of a distant good which he could not see nor demonstrate that is our the promises of heaven they are distant good ambazo zazigine hata ukitaka kusifikiria you cannot see them but we should deny ourselves for those things that you cannot see so man must learn to surrender the feasible for the invisible and in so doing he can rise in the scale of being in the higher ladder of heaven so we must learn to surrender the feasible yale tunaona to, to learn to surrender them kuanza kusarenda for the sake of what the infi- invisible kwa sababu yale ambaye hayaonekani ndio ya maana sana kuliko gani yanayoonekana yanayoonekana hapo eh hapo ndio chita iko sababu watu the feasible wanachukua za maana sana kuliko the infi <coughs> But his if it is not by the feasible they represent death they are temporal na ndio unaona kila kitu ambaye ni feasible ukiangalia kina mwanzo na mwisho anything which means nataka kufunisha mna gani there is nothing permanent in this world this world everything is going kila kitu kinafanya nini kinaenda na ndio unaona kila saa watu wanaenda unasikia ati mtu amekufa wanaenda wanamzika 
Mnakakaa kidogo, mwingine pale wanaenda. Every time watu wanafanya nini? Wanaenda. Watu wanaenda. Lakini wale wanabaki? Kwa nini wale wanabaki hawaonaki kama wataenda? Kwa nini? Watu wanaenda mazishi wanazizika mtu. Wakitoka pale anaanza kukwambia vision. Yeye hako na vision ya 2030. Yeye yeah, amesahau? Amesahau ameona yeye kabisa kabisa yeye hataenda. Atakaa. Do you know why? Unajua ni kwa nini mtu kabisa haamini anaenda? It is because man by nature is like God. And the soul of a man will never die. Sasa ni ngumu sana so, kwa sababu kifo ambaye tutakufa ni huu mwili. Huu mwili tutafanya nini? But the soul will live forever. Kwa hivyo ndio naona binadamu katika mafikra yake yeye because man is not this body. Binadamu sio nini? Sio huu mwili. There is that inner invisible body ambaye itaishi nini? Eta, eternally. That's why hata mtu akifa pale yeye hayezi ona atakufa ni kweli ni kwa sababu ukweli ni kwamba hatafanya nini hatakufa ni mwili ni mwili itaenda tu lakini atakufa kwa hivyo ndio unaona it is very hard for man to believe yeye atakufa yeye akibaki anaona kana kwamba yeye ataka anaongea tu anasema hata sisi tutaenda lakini yeye undani kwa ndani yake <laughs> eh? yeye anaona ni kana kwamba hatafanya nini? Na kweli hatakufa. Na kweli hatakufa. Nijia That is it. So yeye there is something in the monesha yeye ni wa kukaa milele and that is true. <coughs> na ndio unaona kifo kwa kila mtu inakujanga in a mysterious way without his understanding. Lakini yeye anajua hata wakati amegojeka namna gani. Yeye anajua ako na hope, ako na hope. Hatafanya nini? hataenda anaendaga akiwa na the full hope so kama Mungu anatuonesha that whatever we this is a, just a vehicle tumefanya nini tumepatiwa hii ni gari ya kutumia ni kama vile wewe unaenda na hii gari ukifika pale fulani una change nini una change gari nyingine So wakati Mungu akitusaidia tutakuja kujifundisha about the astral plane ama the astral body utakuja kuona kifo man never die he only changes the via the vehicle he only changes the vehicle here you are huko katika gari ambayo inafanya nini inaonekana inaonekana lakini ukitoka katika huu mwili unapatiwa another vehicle which is in view invisible utashangaa sana utakuja kuona binadamu only changes the vehicle utakuja kuona hata binadamu wanga anatuona wakati ametoka katika huu mwili the only thing akifanya hivi hayezi kushika wewe lakini heaven wakati we are surrounded na wale watu ambao wametuacha kama hawajapita hapo waende the mechanic ambaye ni mental at, yani plane hapa katika astro tunakaa na wao but they are in a different vehicle that we cannot see them lakini wao wanatuona only they don't have a body like this one ambayo watatuguza hiyo ni ya siku nyingine but they can they control our